Welcome back, everyone. It is day seven now. We are starting a new topic. We're now looking at liquidity providers. So liquidity providers are the ones who actually deposit the USDC and ETH into the pair so that people can swap through it. Obviously, if there's not enough liquidity, you run into all sorts of different issues. We're going to go over that over the next few days. But today, we're just going to look at what is the liquidity added and removed over time for the USDC and ETH pair. There are a few functions you can use to use this, and Jackie is going to walk you all through it. Thank you, Andrew. To get the liquidity added, we look at the event mint table. We also left join on the transactions table because there's no information of the liquidity providers in the event mint table. By joining to the transactions table, we're able to grab the from field in the transactions, and that would be the liquidity provider. Similarly, to get the liquidity removed, we are going to look at the event burn table. Then we would look at the transactions table once again to find the LPs that decided to remove the liquidity. LP sent for liquidity provider. After that, we are going to introduce a new concept, which is how to generate a complete sequence of dates. Because sometimes you would have a week where no activity has happened, but we would like to see that on our visualization. So that's why we need to generate a full sequence of week. After that, we are ready to join on the pair created event table. And that is how we are going to find the token address for the two tokens that exist in this pair. After that, we can use the tokens.erc table to find the decimal for each of the two tokens in this pair. So we can find the actual raw amount of these tokens and then we are done. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with our uh, CT. And we're gonna first look at the uh, mints, right? So we said that we need to look at the Uniswap v 2 pair mint event table. So we're gonna do select from the mint event. Then we would need to get to the date. And then we already know that we want to aggregate by the week. So we're going to do date trunk by the week. And we are going to trunk the time, so event block time, and then this is our week. And then we are going to grab the contract address for this particular pair, which we will be using later. And then we would also need to sum up the amount zero and amount one of the token here, right? So first we need to cast the amount to be a double type because right now it's a var chart. And then after we cast, we need to apply the aggregate sum function. To sum it up, we are going to name this the total zero added. So apply the string drill, but now to amount one. Okay, now we are going to do a join on Ethereum dot transactions because we need to find the uh, liquidity providers, right? So M equals the event transaction hash is equal to the transactions hash. So if we do that, then here we are able to grab um, the distinct from transaction from would be the liquidity providers because those are the ones who minted the LP tokens. So count of that is um, our unique minters. And then we are going to filter for a particular contract address. So we have been doing USDC wrapped ETH. That's what we are going to do as the default. Okay, so where, and then group by one, two. So now we are going to set up the burns table very, very similarly to the mints table that we are getting. But instead of the event mint, 
we are going to look for the event burn. We're going to alias that as B instead of joining on M dot event transaction hash. We're going to change it to B dot transaction hash. And here instead of added, B removed. Removed. Ah, I actually made a mistake here. So here should be one. Here should also be one. Next step, we are going to combine both together. Okay, so select from LP mint. Then we are going to do a full outer join. Why? Because we want information from both table. We had a lot of times done left join because we want to anchor the information on the main table, but now we want information on both tables. So we do a full outer join. LP burns. We're gonna do for that one, B for this one. And then what are we joining on? We are joining on the time, the week equals to the week, as well as the pair equals to the pair. Okay, now we have it set up. Let's grab the column that we need. Okay, because we're doing a full order joint, right? So some of the weeks the information might exist in either one of the tables. So we're gonna apply a coalesce function to make sure that if it does not exist in one table, it grabs from another table. So here we're going to do coalesce. Okay, so m dot week, uh, b dot week. So yep, and as the week. And then coalesce, we also want to grab the pair address as the pair. Okay, next up, we want to grab the uh, unique minters. And if there is none that week, we're going to fill it in with a zero. Uh, and then similarly, unique burners, zero as unique burners. And then we are going to do the total zero added and removed and total one added and removed. So uh, minted dot total zero added as total zero added. Okay. And then we're going to do total one added as total one added. And then now we're going to do b dot total zero removed total zero removed similarly going to do total one removed and total one removed now we have joined the mints and burns together so now this is the part where we are going to generate uh, a complete weekly sequence because some weeks there might be no activity happen but we still want to be able to visualize the non-activity for that particular week we're gonna do a CT for this one so weeks as what so instead of this we're gonna start a nested CTE here we're gonna start a completely new CTE so weeks sequence as Okay, what are we doing here? So we're selecting sequence. So this is a sequence function we are uh, using to generate a sequence of date. So it takes the parameter start and, and then it will take the incremental changes. So what is our start? We want to start by the minimum of this LP combined week, the first week where we have some sort of LP activity for this particular pair. So we're going to do select and then we are going to do the minimum of the week, right? And then just to be safe, we are going to cast this minimum of the week as a timestamp field. Okay, so from LP combined. All right, so that is our start. And then what is our end? End would be currently. So this would be the date trunk of the week. What is the current week? The current week would be now, right? As timestamp. 
Okay, mm and now we are ready to get the incremental going. How are we gonna <coughs> generate this sequence? The in between should be seven days, right? There's seven days each week, so we're gonna add seven days in between. That is our sequence, and we are going to call our sequence week. To actually get the sequence going, we just need to actually unnest it because when you call the sequence function, you're generating a sequence. We are going to do select from, okay, so from week's sequence, and then we're going to do a cross join on the unnest of the week. When you're unnesting something that looks like one, two, would then becomes one would then becomes one, two, like that. We're gonna select weeks dot week. We're gonna select this particular new table that we created and the new column, right? Okay, cool. So that is how we generate a full sequence of the weeks without any gaps. And now we are going to combine the weeks together join it back on the lp combined so lp combined weeks as um, select from so first we're gonna select from weeks w w and then we're gonna left join lp combined right because we want to anchor this part of the query to be on the weeks so we're gonna select w dot week. Then we're gonna select lp combined dot pair is one of the field, and then we would want the unique mentor. We would want the unique burner, and then we would want the total zero added and the total one added and the total zero removed and the total one removed the way we have to join this is on the lp combined week is equal to w dot week last step we just need to adjust for the decimals so lp combined weeks decimals us okay select from lp combined weeks we are going to call this lpw and then we are going to join on the factories pair created event table to get the token address so we can adjust for the decimal so pc on pc dot pair is equal to lpw dot pair okay and then then we are going to join on the tokens.erc20 table to find the respective symbols and decimals right so token zero is for the token zero and then we're going to have a second tokens uh, erc20 table for the token one so on tk0 dot contract address equals to pc token zero which we just grabbed by joining onto the factory pair created table so we're gonna do the same drill but this time on token one and token one great okay so we got our table set up we are get going to get the needed information so first we are going to get the week and then we're going to get the pair address and then we're going to get the symbol but sometimes symbol may not exist so we are going to apply coalesce if it exists then we take it and if it does not exist we'll take the token address instead of the token symbol as token zero similarly tk1 symbol if the symbol exists then we'll take it otherwise we will uh to take it that should be a zero as token one okay and then we're gonna get the unique minters 
and then we are going to multiply the unique burners um, this is really to just visualize it uh, better later on so we're just calling the minters as like plus and the burners as a minus now we're gonna adjust for the amount right so let's go with the total zero added okay we are going to adjust by the decimal point it needs to be so divided by 10 to the whatever decimal we find but again sometimes we cannot find the decimal then we're gonna just apply a default at so we're gonna use the coalesce function and then if we can find the decimals then we use it else we're gonna adjust it by the 18th decimal and then this will be the total zero added and then for the total one added we are going to do the same drill total one added and then so for the total zero removed we are going to apply a minus one before so multiply by um, negative one because it's negative and then this is removed and then we are going to do the same thing on the total removed for token one and name it total one removed awesome we are ready for the last step there's many 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 weeks so we want to just look at a particular time span we're gonna set up a query to do that so select star from that where the week is greater than uh, a particular timestamp so we are going to start another parameter start time and then let's see so making it a date field and then we're gonna do february and let's run it we have an error where is the error select uh mismatch input from expecting mm, missing a parentheses cast of that so select i don't think i need that Let's try to select cast min week yep okay so another error here unique minters unique burners aha uh -huh. okay it's because here i named it unique minters forgot to change it okay another error 78 total zero added cannot be resolved yep because mistyped it total zero total one total zero total one all right, looks like it finished running. Let's create a bar chart. Let's first look at the LPs, right? We want to look at the minters and the burners. And then we can enable them so that they stack on top of each other for each of the weeks. Let's just name this minters and burners. Minters and burners. Now we're going to look at the liquidity. We're going to look at the liquidity for token zero, token zero added, token zero removed, enable stacking. So token zero liquidity. Perfect. Then we are going to do token one. Perfect. And we will do token one liquidity. That is the answer. Thank you, Jackie. It's a great explanation. I think we all understand a little better now how liquidity is added and removed from pairs. For bonus points, you might want to look into how many liquidity providers are active versus passive managers of their positions, meaning if they're adding in liquidity multiple times a week or they only add and remove once every few months. You can add this as a group by layer on top of your chart. For tomorrow, we're going to look at what is the percent concentration of liquidity sources, meaning is it one wallet providing 15% or 20% of the liquidity in the pool, or is it more evenly distributed? And you're going to do this for the USDC WEATH pair as well. See you tomorrow.